All right. Good evening, friends. Hello, hello. Welcome to Creative Exploration. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully very well. Hopefully everything sounds good. Let me know if my mic's all crunchy again. Otherwise, hello. How are we doing tonight? Um, tonight, I am going to uh, go through some new workflows on Banadoko. I saw some really funky stuff today when I uh, hopped on, and I thought, well, why not? Uh, yeah, there's uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm thinking, 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 we're going to start with... I'm pretty excited about this pose duplicator script, actually. Might uh might play with that one later, but the idea being that you can take one pose and then uh and then add more of them to the same scene and give yourself videos where, you know, more than one person doing some stuff. So definitely want to look at this because I think it'll be cool. Making some really cool videos. Um and that's by Pollyanna on uh Banadoko. Uh, I think I'm also gonna look at the um video to video upscaler with the the tile control net it looks to be maybe the way to go for upscaling that's the original that's the upscaled version it looks really good um better than a lot of the ones i've been seeing lately so yeah i think we'll play with that too um uh what else uh i don't know if i'll touch motion control until i've played with it personally a bit uh because like i don't really know what it's supposed to do so this is interesting too. Uh, segmenting characters and applying control net only to the segmented part. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, and like I mean, as you can see, the Banadoko Discord is full of uh, crazy workflows and uh, experiments and stuff you can play with. They're pretty much all for comfy UI, I think. And uh, we just added some um, in Gulf, <clears throat> uh, or sorry, N Fugue. I thought it was always in Gulf. I should learn to read. Um, Infugue does that drag Nua thing, which I haven't played with yet. It looks really exciting. Uh, I'm going to dig into that eventually, but uh, I haven't even played with this yet, so I don't think I'll do it right on stream uh, until I've played with it at home once. Um, but yeah, it's uh, basically you can take po portions of the video and then click and drag where you want them to move, and then the video moves, so it, it looks really cool. Uh, let's start with this upscaler, actually. Let's check to see if there's a... Uh latest version i think that's it so download the workflow let's load up comfy ui doop, doop, doop. how's everybody doing on this fine friday night well i hope not sure why my comfy takes so long to start up but uh it does could be the nine thousand node packs i have installed could be <clears throat> i won't rule it out holy cow let's go all right uh, Chrome and one two seven. This is us. Clear. Actually, let me just save this workflow I was working on. There we go. There. Okay, load downloads. Work V to V upscaler. Okay, we are missing a node called get image size. We can stability comfy nodes. All right, restart comfy. Yeah, the uh, the unsampler is fun. Refresh. Hey. Okay. Let's see what I don't have and what I do have and what I need and what I don't have and what I need and what I don't have. Okay. This is. Okay. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? We got control net, uh, realistic liner control net, uh, all in one preprocessor. Oh, we're using tile. Okay. I haven't used tile yet. I think I might have to download it. Tile control net SD15. <clears throat> is that it? Or is there like uh, safe tensors? And a tile. Ah, Maybe this one? Uh, okay, what do I use then? I guess I download the control net tile SD15. Uh, safe tensors? Is that the tile? No. Control net 112. Oh, tile E. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully, tile E. Guess we'll find out. All right, download the save tensors file for tiling, and we will drop that in our AI Comfy UI models control net. Bloop. All right, cool. <clears throat> so let's uh, get all our stuff selected here. Um, 
we are loading a checkpoint, so we'll load, uh, I don't know, Dream Shaper, I guess. Uh, we're using a Laura. Uh, don't want to use a Laura, so I'm going to select one of mine and I'm going to set it to yep. load VAE. We'll just use the regular VAE because it's SD15 film. Okay, uh, boo -doo -boo -boo. all right, IP adapter plus, sure. Clipviz model, that would be Clipvision SD15. Control net line art, control net tile, refresh, because we just added a file. Where are you, tile E? Am I blind? Feel blind. Check on models, tile E, okay, blah, blah, blah. Tile preprocessor, sure. I am actually curious what this looks like. I don't really know what it does, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, okay, um, that stuff's all set up. I guess we'll just load, um, I don't know, do I have a video? Maybe this video? No, that's a stable diffusion video. Do I have any videos of human people doing human things? Oh, maybe the dancer? Just need something. That'll do. 1280 by 720, okay. Uh, select every nth two, and let's just do like, um, uh, 32 frames to start. See what this does. <clears throat> okay. I think that's everything. Version version three. Do 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 do. Everything is cool. All right, shall we hit it? What did I miss? Prep image. There. That's what tile does. It just makes it small and gross. All right. I'll assume it's doing machine learning things that I don't understand. Maybe you're supposed to upscale footage you've already made with Animate Diff, but we'll see what happens when I try to upscale real human footage. We do have nude and NSFW and negative, so hopefully... Oh, boy. You know, that looks to me like that control net's not the right one, but... Uh, 7 minutes and 46 seconds to find out if I did a stupid or not. Yeah, it seems normal. Okay, well, uh, oh. Oh. Oh, no. Maybe this will look better step to step. Let that cook. Patch model add downscale? Koya deep shrink. Oh, I've never used deep shrink. So let's go back to the Benadoko and read the... So Andro, Andromeda... This is by Andromeda. Andromeda. Let's slap this together. Slap together this workflow. It's all these settings in for use for the stuff we've been creating with Palm Steerable Motion. If you want your videos to have more detail, I've had pretty good luck with the settings. Load all the models, plop in your video, go find something else to do. The workflow takes a video input and splits it off into IP adapters, animate diff using each frame from the video in a linear way, and then control net as well. So I finish with the fun art project and dive into testing other control nets. Save those better notes. All right, cool. I don't know what this is going to be, but I think it's going to be bad. But I think that's because I didn't use... Um, <clears throat> animate diff footage to upscale. So uh, we can also try it with an animate diff animation and see what it does. But the fact that it complains so much about this makes me think that this is not the right uh, control net model for tiling, but we shall see. Yeah, this is not fast. But it's also rendering at 1280 by 720. So, oh, you know, what are you going to do? Four minutes. I am going to, while this is going, I'm just going to grab another workflow from Banadoko and see how many nodes I'm missing. Militant Hitchhiker's Comfy UI Control Net Video Builder. This is the other one I really want to play with tonight. Um, yeah. uh, why is there two? Oh, I see. An open art. Okay. Okay, cool. So we can use this to, uh, interesting. We might not need this tonight. This is a cool workflow though. So we can use this to process footage that we can do cool stuff. It's probably in two steps because having all this stuff on your main workflow gets in, gets really, really confusing. Like, uh, because like the way comfy works, right? You can run different workflows in different tabs and you just queue up the jobs into the system. So you know, you don't always have to have everything in your one workflow that's all working sequentially, right? So if I want to do a lot of iteration and try to figure out what my control net videos are before I do the work, I might not want to stop it every time it gets to the diffusion channel or the diffusion step. 
we can just do this, build our videos, then use those videos to do stuff with. So yeah, I'm all about modular workflows like this. I think it's a good idea um, because you don't always need all those nodes in your, in your work. Ooh, I also saw this, which is like, a, it's supposed to be an upscaler kind of like um, Magnifique, but um, they've been really working on it a lot. 10 times Shrek. Not bad, but you can definitely see the tiles. Those look good though. But ultimately, that's the problem with a lot of these tiled um, upscalers is they they definitely start to reveal the tiles. Is this done? Let's see. No, but it's looking real weird. So, you know, we got that going for us. Yeah, I'm not sure upscaling live real video is the way to go. I think upscaling uh, existing control net for existing uh, animate diff footage is probably the move. Try a shorter clip with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just became aware of Militant and uh, that workflow is cool. See if they want to come on as a guest. Maybe they can walk us through the workflow. That might be a cool thing, actually, to start bringing on guests to have us walk through their workflows with us. So I'm not just stabbing in the dark wildly. Oh, is this a two-step process? What's going on here? Is there another step here? What's going on? I've got some special guests coming up I can't announce yet, but when I do, I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised. I've got some very cool people lined up. Just need to confirm a few things. But that's a little teaser. I've got some very cool guests on their way. People you might have seen before on YouTube. Talking about AI. Teaching you things about AI. I do like the guest streams. They're, they're very fun. <clears throat> so I guess this is a two-pass process here. I, I don't really know what it's doing now because the, there's just a bar going up and I'm getting no readout at all in the... Uh, <laughs> other special guests i would love to know what this tile how this tile thing works what it's doing why it's in there i don't see why this is doing two steps two runs is there a noise seed add noise this is all just like normal wait oh wait where does this model go wait i'm so confused why is it doing a second run and what is it doing a secret i will wait for this one to finish but if it goes again i'm giving up i'm trying to figure out why why that would happen oh the vhs notes have a video info output now i wonder what that is custom scale factor vae positive negative prompt we're doing our business with the laura that's fine this is so strange where did that image go oh does it run back through itself like, what's this connected to? What? Does anyone see why this would be going twice? The confusion's making me tear up. Actually, I think it's the dryness. Also, again, if you want to play music during the stream, please do so. The only reason I don't play music during the stream is because I want you to be able to listen to your own music. You shouldn't have to be forced to listen to what I'm listening to. If you want to listen to what I'm listening to, you can click on my name on Discord and listen along. Today, I believe I will listen to some old funk music because I am an old person and I like funk. Love watching my poor camera try to auto track my bobbing head. Anybody play with Magnet? Anybody make any cool beats? Anybody play with Animate Anyone? If you want to check those stuff out, check my last stream. Did a run through with Pinocchio and how to install them and maintain the environments and all that. I really, uh, I really like Pinocchio because um, it's nice to be able to compartmentalize these Python environments. Um, they take up more space, but you can just delete them when you're done. So, and if you have fast internet, uh, yeah, just do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's it. What do you say? Last one or nah? Okay, we're filming. That's good. 
<laughs> Otekra, style, Otekra type beats. I mean, I love Otekra, but probably not the kind of Otekra beats you want, right? <clears throat> That's pretty good. It's crazy he just did it with live video. The input footage over here, you can see it. Now, let me know if my uh, connection gets all wonky. Uh, YouTube is screaming at me that it's not getting enough data. So, yeah, let me know if it goes, turns to crap. I don't know what I can do about it, but let me know. All right. Uh, well, yeah, this workflow is interesting. Um, let me, uh, I can't think of a shorter, like 32 frames took eight minutes. So I, I'm just going to leave this one alone for now. But this is a cool workflow if you just need to upscale stuff uh, and you don't mind waiting. Um, yeah, and that's called the... Um, Video to video upscaler with the Animate Diff by uh, uh, Andromeda. So yeah, um, if you want to play with it yourself, just get it off Banadoko. Uh, links in the description below. But remember, if you're watching this video more than a week from now, that link won't work because the Banadoko Discord uh, updates their invites every week. So uh, just go ahead and ask on my Discord or anywhere else. Anyone else you know is into this stuff, they'll probably have an invite for you. Um, and if you want to invite, uh, uh, generate an invite for a friend, you're already on there. You need to generate one. Just go up here to Banadoko, invite people, and then copy that uh, copy that link there. I mean, most of y'all know how to do this already, but whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. Let's try. This is so interesting to me, but I don't have a Quest 3, so I can't test it. But uh, essentially, we can set up... Uh, set up uh, a depth viewer in in uh, VR so that you can look at your stable diffusion generations in pseudo 3D. Very cool. A lot like the looking glass stuff I've been doing, but um, you know, in your in your head. Do, 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 do. Oh, maybe. So this is just a random Python script by Pollyanna. How does it loop? This is really clever. Okay, so let's preprocessor and ice skaters. Take a video, use the attached preprocessor to extract the pose, store it as a GIF. Use the GIF as input for the pose duplicator, which will clone the pose information as described. Use that information with standard open pose. Okay, let's get the pose duplicator script and see if it runs. And if it does, yay! Downloads uh Python pose duplicator.py. What do you say? Okay, let's edit that file. I think I have some open pose stuff kicking around here. Do I have anybody like running around though? Mm, 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 mm. Open pose. We had John Travolta looking around all confused. Taylor Swift. Nobody's walking though. Where's my dancers at? Okay, we'll just generate one. Axles. Let's try a dancer. We'll just put a bunch of dancers. Just need the one dancer, most of their body. That might work. Let's try it. I'm really excited about this pose duplicator thing. I think it could be really cool. I don't know if it's going to work on this clip, though, but let's we'll try it. Uh, okay, so I need a comfy. Need a fresh comfy. Let's clear this, save that for later. Okay, to extract open pose data, it's actually quite easy. We just need to load video. Load that video up. There he is. All right. You just need a DW preprocessor, which is an open pose processor, and a video combined. That's really all you need. Uh, let's go uh, 24 frames per second. It's asking for a GIF, so let's leave it as a GIF, and we'll go open pose, open pose. Save it as a GIF. Uh, I'm just going to do... Uh, 64 frames starting 64 frames in and hopefully that'll be a good animation and we'll be able to see it here so we'll see what we get so yeah load the video it'll skip 64 frames then uh render 64 frames and then we can use it that should be enough let's see if it can if the thing can clone this so we'll save this we got our little gif and we'll call it uh, pose.gif. And so it's in the same folder. So now we can just say image open. Does it really need double slashes? Yeah. Pose.gif. All right, let's try this. Save it. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very curious what this makes. Oh, that's terrifying. All right, let's hit it. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, specific workflow I've been using lately for this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I don't actually need to use the info footage. What I need to do is tell it that it's open pose and feed it the video. So we can unplug the image from there and we'll load video, load up the one we just made. All right. Uh, we'll do the whole video cause it's short. Uh, can we make it Barbies? Yeah. Let's try making it Barbies dancing. Yeah. We don't need the input footage. Width and height will be determined by this input footage, I believe. Uh, I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way. Height and it is preferences, power properties, 910 by 512. So 512 by 910. Okay. And let's do Barbie dancing uh, in a rainy New York City alley. I think this works better if the character is moving across the across the scene. When did I get introduced to Comfy? Well, uh, first started playing with Automatic Eleven Eleven right when it came out, and then uh, Comfy I actually waited a little while on because uh, it looked you know really complicated and scary, but it's not. Uh, having come from Blender and stuff, it, mm, it's pretty cool. So uh, comfy, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell with stuff like this. Feels like it's been years, but it's probably only been months, right? Ugh. Okay. Well, uh, I don't think we need to finish that one. It's kind of terrible. Uh, let's uh, let's try a different input footage where the person's sort of like running across the screen or something. So let's try running. We basically want someone going across the frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's eighty four days. Just feels like 84 years. Can we just stay on their feet? Great. No, I need a person. No, I don't need fancy cinematography. That might work. Because we can speed it up, right? Yeah, let's try that. Oh, did I close my stupid one, two, seven? Load video. GIF save. Let's do the whole shebang. Then I can load it faster, but I'll have all the frames. Oh, wait, no, I guess I should do. No, no, let's try this. Good. I think it's ignoring the person up on the bridge. I was worried there'd be a little person, but it's only on one people. So that's good. Uh, the pose estimator and the video combined turn this video into a skeleton. And then we're using that skeleton to make the next video. You see it here as it loads up. <clears throat> oh, her poor head. Right, because she's away, facing away from the camera. I forgot about that. Yeah, like Joe Peace's work, Bentley. Do you guys know Joe Peace? Joe Peace, is it? No, oh, it's Joe. Yeah, Joey Peace. It's fantastic stuff. I love, I love his stuff. Layers and After Effects and absolute insanity. So good. Uh, it does a lot of um, like perfect loops like these. It's just crazy stuff. Love it. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Joe Pease's work. That's um, that's After Effects for sure. I don't think they do any AI stuff. Just need a person running from one side of the screen to the other. And I don't want to go out to the park and record it myself because I'm too out of shape. Mm, no, I don't think that'll work either. <laughs> That's already what I need, kind of. Uh... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely uh, not an AI maxi. <laughs> Best tool for the job, right? Just need one shot. Maybe a bicyclist, maybe a ice skater. We just need somebody going left to right, man. Or right to left. I'd accept right to left. That is great footage, but I can't use it. Just go from one side of the ring to the other. That's all I need. Oh, this might be it. This might be it. Yeah, this is going to be real weird. Okay, let's try this one. Download this. Let's open up our comfy tab. Swap out the video. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can get this. 
I'm not sure it can. And how long is the video after she disappeared? Not too long. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You can't find any stock footage of just somebody like riding a bike from one side of the screen to the other. It's always like slow motion, slightly off center, depth of field, soft focus. Look at me. I'm a cinematographer. I got no room for a cyclist here. I don't even have room for a CRT TV to do some video art on. Hmm. I am super tempted to do this one just to see how weird it gets. Let's see what the script does to that one. I'm 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 very curious. Downloads. So I just have to rename it, right? To pose.gif. Yeah. So let's pose1.gif. Call you pose.gif and run the Python. What was it? Pose O D I R star.py. Pose duplicator. So Python. Pose duplicate. What the? It's working. What do we get? Whoa. Yeah, we're trying that. Okay. Uh, Final pose result. You will go into here. Oh, got to rename it. There's a couple bugs with um with this, but we'll get it. Uh, And then the file size is 910 by 512. Okay. The other way around. 912 by 5. 910 is not a thing. Okay. And let's not do Barbie. Let's do, uh, what do we got here? We're going to do Nicolas Cage's, Volcanoes, Burning Crows. Let's try Mushrooms. Mushroom, 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 Mushroom. mushroom. Uh, this should be weird. Okay. Mushrooms dancing in a rainy forest. I don't love this Cronenberg Barbie situation we got going on here. Hopefully this will uh, fix real quick. Oh, nice. Thanks, Corey. I'll check it out. Whoa. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, I just remembered they said on the thing to turn down the motion scale. I got to see what their motion scale is set to. How do I do that? Uh, Let's have a look at their ice skaters.json. Let's download that. Uh -huh. And then open up a new tab. Load that workflow. 1.2 for the open pose control net. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to grab this uh, AZE1IIB pixel mix checkpoint because that looked great. Uh, okay. Reinit. Whoa, what are iteration options? Uh, I've got so much to learn about Animate Diff, apparently. Okay, where are the Animate Diff settings? Though? Okay, 0.701. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's try 1.2 on the thing. What else can we steal? Kind of want to try this free init thing. Iteration options goes into sample settings. Sample settings. Oh, okay. Iteration options into here, settings into here. Okay. Two iterations, Gaussian 2.5.250.4999, false dink in it. Okay. So these are all, uh, okay. Uh, that's okay. You two on here, sample settings. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me even try that. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, uh, I do want to run this again with with the settings they had. So, so I have never used this free init and sample settings stuff. Oh, I didn't check to see if zero default comfy zero zero default. Comfy. Okay, yeah, I've never used these uh, these before. Where's this model? A Z. Uh oh. Oh, cool. Yoink in that. Is this a Laura or a checkpoint? Oh, it's a base model. Maybe we'll pivot into a pixel art uh, pixel art thing tonight. I do love doing pixel art with Stable Diffusion. All right, let's... Uh, is that done? Yeah. Okay, that's actually worse with the uh, settings, but I did notice they were using the stabilized motion Laura, which I don't have here. Let's grab that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh install models. Uh, Steve. 
with the ability stuff. So, okay, let's go with uh, animate diff. And I'm looking for uh, long animate diff. Oh, yeah, I forgot about long animate diff. Stabilize mid, stabilize high. That's the one they were using. Let's try that one. Refresh, and let's try that stabilized high. Because that's gooey. <laughs> I stopped it right at the end. Checkpoints. Bloop. I do kind of want to try this with the pixelated one now. Pixelate. There we are. And what did it say the trigger word was? Pixel art and pixel world. Two iterations. Oh, that's what this does. Two iterations. Free in it. Okay. Why do we do two runs? Now I might have to have Pollyanna on to describe this to me. So this is just getting worse, I think. So what I'm going to do is, let's think, let's think, let's think. Let's do the bicycle. Corey sent me over a bicycle video. It'll be perfect for this, I think. I'm going to speed it up a bit. And uh, yeah, we can cancel this run. Let's get it. Do, do, do. This video is nice and clean and clear and smooth, so it should be able to get the open pose data pretty, pretty correctly. We shall see. <laughs> okay, so let's grab this, save, call it ooze.gif, rename our final, yeah, two, three, that's all of them. Yeah, okay, let's try this. Uh, it's going to try playing with these settings a bit here. That may be too many bikers. Might make for a very interesting video, though. It's a little human centipede for my taste. Oh, well, that's worse. Wait, so we'll be 16 and 32. So let's try, I don't know, 32, oh, 32 and 64. Maybe too many bikes. That's a hell of a tandem bike. There's like 50 people on it. What do we get here? Oh, this might be the one. Yeah, I think this is the one. Let's try that. Uh, oh, yeah, I got to rename it. Uh, boop. Okay, uh, four. Uh, this. There we go. Okay, uh, let's do... Clowns riding bicycles in the circus. We'll try it with the pixel art stuff. It'll probably look a little messed up because I don't have the um, pixel art post-processing stuff uh, set up, but we can set it up if it if this is encouraging and looks good, then I'll set up the uh, pixelization thing, and we'll see if we can make some cool pixelated videos. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Uh, these are also a little blurry and messy because we're literally doing LCM, you know, at four steps. So we can get probably way better results if we let it cook longer, you know. Did I do something wrong here? Oh, there they go. Oh, wow. It's like people sliding across a bicycle. <laughs> That's so creepy. Yeah, let's try that crawling millipede. Let's try a crawling millipede. I'm going to let this one upscale. I'm very curious. That's a crazy video. The fact that it runs twice is so weird. I don't know if it helps. I guess I could unplug it and run it again with the same seed and see what it does. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for yawning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Render. Oh, I still have the mushrooms on. That might explain some of this weirdness. Maybe I should turn the IP adapters off for the next run. Or put in pictures of millipedes. <laughs> well they were so weird 
It's so weird. Right, let's try it again. Oh, that reminds me. I'm going to unplug the... Unplug you. Just try one run. <laughs> Uh, no, it's just a bunch of people. I think it's always going to do people because open pose just is people, right? I am curious, though. I'm curious what happens when we run lose control with this because lose control, it's weird. I don't know what it's going to do here, but I'm very curious. Is everybody slowly sliding across a bench? Yeah, but this time they shouldn't. Oh, it just... Oh, it just drew the poses. That's creepy. I don't know what I expected. I mean, that seems about right. Uh, oh, so you need like batch to batch to no image list to batch. I think that's nine ten. I guess nine twelve. Okay, let's go back to open pose because that's just nonsense. Now we're going to try and get this pixelator to work. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um, close. Still ugly as him, though. Rudus colors before palette swap. Let's go with the NES. The grid. It'd probably make more sense to actually just put this in a separate workflow. Then we can load the videos up and, and play with them separately. But yeah, that's really weird. Uh, maybe a GIF? Uh, oh, what about Forrest Gump? Like this one. I'm very curious. Is this still going? Some skills are ugly. All right, uh, let's try our friend, Forrest. No, wrong file name. All right, let's try. Where are you, baby? Forest. There it is. Give her, bud. Okay. I'm going to assume this is actually an eight frame per second video, maybe 12. And then let's do this. Oh, yeah, you need to be a GIF. So what I'm doing is I'm interpolating it from an eight frame per second video to a 24 frame per second video um, at half speed. And hopefully we'll get a smoother run that's around the same length. Uh, uh, no, let's do this. Let's use this one. All right. So you're going to be pose.gif, pose 54, pose.gif. We'll run this at all script. Duplicate our forest. Whoa, that was fast. Okay, let's set those settings back to what they were. Try that again. We got three of them. Maybe we can get some more of them. Let's try 16 and 8. Is that too many people? It's crazy. Okay, uh, what if I make the minimum output frames longer? Hmm, 64. Other way around. 64. 32. Okay, that worked. Okay. I'm trying to understand these settings. Oh. I think I understand what it's doing now. Yeah, that's probably enough. Let's try that. Animal. Animal. Forest.gif. Okay, let's add pixel art, pixel world. Uh, man running a marathon. Upload downloads this one, and we want forest.gif. Oh, wrong forest.gif. Forest open pose.gif. View you. There it is. I feel like I want to run it twice. If you want to play a video more than once through your input, you can use this node called repeat image batch on any batch of images. And it'll load it twice instead of loading it once, or three times, or four times. You know what I mean? I think actually I want to repeat it once. So what that should do is make this twice as long by repeating it. Crazy. 
Do 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 Run, Stickman Forest, run! There's several forests. Oh, I should have checked the file dimensions of this because it's not 910 by 512. So this might be weird. It might be weird. It might be okay. It might be weird. It's possible. <laughs> That's kind of great. Run! It's like a terrible square dance. <laughs> Yeah, this is real trippy. I'm going to grab a drink while this renders. Y'all stand up, stretch your legs, or don't. I'm not your mom. We've been at this for about an hour and a half, so uh, yeah, feel free. Stand up. Move your body, you know, or don't. Whatever. I'll be back in about two or three minutes. Just going to grab a drink. All right. Well, that pixelator was taking forever, so we'll play with that later. I think that has to do with the gridding and the stuff that it does. Uh, it's more of a post-processing tool anyway. It's kind of dumb to put it in the workflow, but, you know, I'm kind of dumb. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. It's broken now. Oh, I put them all in the same outfit. Okay, that's funny. This makes me want to make a bunch of crazy stuff in Blender now. With multiple subjects. <laughs> Surprise. Excuse me. How well is this handling it? I'm also curious what this upscale looks like. Oh, weird. Cool. All right. Uh, that's cool. I don't know. Find another gif. Uh, someone running from left to right. That's tempting. Someone going across the frame, please. It's crazy to find one where the camera is still and the person is moving across the frame. It's always trained in on the runner. Just something where the person is running across the screen. That might be great. I still think I'm looking for a very specific type of framing. Ah, hello. Save you. Running man. I'm here. Rename it. Downloads. Desktop. Where did I save that file? The desktop? No, no. I do want to repeat. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. To... Oh, boy. What did that do? It just failed. Okay, uh, let's uh, convert it first. Derp. Wait, what does this do? Oh, nothing if there's only the one. Okay. Final pose result. No, we want actually pose. .gif. Yep. Do this because it looks like crap. You look like you're 12. Now. All right. <coughs> nope. Be too small. Bigger subject, please. I am kind of curious what this is like. We'll find just the right clip. You need one where the person's well lit. They're to be sort of like recognizable as a human body. Do, 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 do. 
<clears throat> Not bad. Definitely need something better, though. Anyway, you can have some fun with this uh, pose detector. It's really easy to use. You just run the Python script and on the GIF and adjust the settings here as you watch. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's again, those stuff's on uh, Panadoku. So let's, uh, instead of bashing our head against this anymore, let's clear this. All right. Let's have a look at Banadoko again. <laughs> What's Jags up to? Ah, loop step, loop, loop, loop step is crazy fun. Nice. So you can box out your animations in Blender and then use loose control, control net to sort of feed them in. Um, I've been actually using loose control a little bit, uh, sort of not for this intended purpose, and it's kind of awesome. Maybe I'll show you guys my loose control workflow. Yeah, let's do that. Let's finish the stream on something cool. Loose control is weird. It's, imagine you have two palm trees in your scene and you want them to sway back and forth. In Blender or whatever, you could make two boxes on top of poles and just sway them back and forth in an animation. And then you can save that animation and use it as loose control input uh, if you make it look like a depth map, essentially. Uh, but uh, as many of you know, I make Blender masks and <clears throat> those Blender masks actually work incredibly well as loose control input footage. So yeah, check this out. Let's add a case sampler. That's the heart of our diffusion process as always VAE decoder on the way out. We're going to add a video combine. Uh, that's in the video helper suite. Note add-ons 24 frames per second. MP4 actually we'll make this a 12 frame per second. MP4 put it in 12 frames per second animate diff. So this is the file structure I use to keep my files from being totally unreadable. <clears throat> each video type is kept in its own folder. Each type of anything really is kept in its own folder. Um, the problem with comfy is if you're using it for more than a couple weeks, whatever, by the time you go back to look at your outputs folder, it's just a pile of files, right? So it's really important to try to maintain some semblance of, uh, folder structure here. You can just add subfolders by putting a backslash after the subfolder. It'll make it if it doesn't exist. Um, so we have our 12 frame per second, uh, source video. I'm also going to rife, uh, interpolate a, uh, 24 frame per second video. <coughs> Let's also be an MP4. <coughs> 24 frames per second. Actually, no, this is a film 2x. Uh, this here, this uh, multiplier, if you increase the multiplier in the interpolation nodes, it'll make it that much slower. It'll interpolate that many more frames between the frames. So uh, a multiplier one is just regular speed. Multiplier two is uh, it inserts a frame between each frame and interpolates them. So you get a more slow motion, but a way smoother version of your video. So the higher that number, the higher the scale of the slow motion. So if you wanted to add a one that's like an, another option that's three times slower, you just copy the node, bring the uh, video into it, and just increase the multiplier. And then just make another combine, plug that in here, and say film 3x. And that way you're giving yourself options every time you render something, because it doesn't take much longer to do this... Uh, interpolation step and then you've you've got you know the 12 frame per second source video you've got a nice interpolated uh twice as slow video and the three times as slow videos so kind of best of all worlds there uh for your outputs all right model we need to add an animate diff animate diff loader uh model can be our checkpoint loader simple well we'll just use dream shaper uh we're also going to want a laura in between there so let's load laura we're going to use the LCM SD15 LoRa. That's at one for both. Clip goes through there. I'm going to use V3 version three. So in between here and here, we actually need uh, nothing. The clip comes out to a uh, clip text and code. We're going to need two of those. So that's our positive and negative prompts. They go into the positive and negative of the case sampler. Uh, the only other thing we need to make this complete is a, well, two things. We need to uh, control net apply advanced, and we're going to load up that loose control control net I was talking about. Uh, if you need it, it's uh, 
Where did I download it from? There it is. Box depth loose control. That's the um Yeah, that's it there. Uh so download that, install it, and select it. One is fine for now. I'll explain what this does in a minute. So control net actually goes in through the clip. So we I, instead of going straight into our case sampler with these, we're gonna come from our positive and negative prompt through control net into our case sampler. Context options, you drag that out. You want to add an animate diff uniform context options node. You set these to whatever you like. Uh, 16 is the length of the context. Don't change that. You can change it if you want, but don't. Uh, context stride, leave it a one. Context overlap, anywhere between two and seven will be fine. Um, animate diff is trained on a bunch of 16 frame segments of videos. That's how it understands motion. It adds a temporal layer to our stable diffusion process so we can understand how things change over time. But because they're only 16 frames, we need a way to extend these past the boundaries of 16 frames, right? So uh, Kosinkadink built this version of Animate Diff called Animate Diff Evolved. And what it does is it looks at a 16 frame window and then it jumps to the next 16 frame window, then it jumps to the next 16 frame window. And that overlap is actually how many frames it tries to interpolate between those context windows. <clears throat> That's why animate diff animations are very smooth, but the context flickers, whereas the forum is very smooth or they're very flickery uh, because the, the, the frames are changing every single frame, but the context is a lot actually easier to maintain in the forum because we're not jumping context windows every 16 frames. So, you know, it's, you pick your poison with, with AI animation. You either want a uh, flipbook animation where you have control over every single frame, like the forum, where you get amazing results with that. Or if you want a really smooth animation based on actual recorded motions, then Animate Diff is, is the way to go. So the Animate Diff, you get weird context. With the forum, you get a slight flickery flipbook uh, feeling to all the animations. So yeah, you pick your poison. And the forum runs an automatic 11.11, so you'd have to uh, install that and run it there. Um, but it's awesome. I mean, I've been a deformed dork for years now gosh that's great uh vae goes into our vae decoder and the only other thing we need uh is a latent image so we're just going to use an empty latent image all right i'm going to say it's a 16 frame animation no 32 frame animation because i want it to span two context windows so i can show you what animate diff is doing um because we're using lcm we're actually able to use the lcm sampler uh the lcm sampler uh unlike the rest of the samplers its cfg scale is from about one to three and it converges in four to ten steps four four steps so so let's set our uh our seed to fixed so that if i run another one with the same seed it won't run and then uh so let's make you green make you red just occurred to me i made a batch size in here which is completely worthless because we're going to use this control net so the one last final thing we need to do with this control net here is load a video into it. So image, VHS, load video. I'm going to load an images path because all my videos are image sequences, but you can do this with load video too. Just load a video into it. It's fine. Okay. Check this out. Uh, what's a good example? Let's use the churros. All right. Add these magical churros. Okay. See, they're just flying around. It's a loop. The churros, they, 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 they float. We got floaty churros. Life is good. Um, I'm going to use those as the input source because it's only 60 frames long. <clears throat> I'm going to select every, yeah, I'll do all 60 because it's four steps. Who cares? It'll be fast. So the only other thing I want to do here is, um, I don't actually need it to be the size it is. I can resize it. So let's use the resize node first. So I want image resize plus it's this one right here. That's in the comfy UI essentials pack. I need to grab that. We're going to resize it to 512 by 512, but we're going to keep proportion. And what that's going to do is just make sure that whatever aspect ratio the input footage is, it sets one side to 512 and the other side to whatever the width or height it is. So it's good. All right. So then we got our image, pop that in here. And now we can actually say for this node here, we don't, uh, we can feed all this information into it from the, all these outputs. So. We're going to convert all these widgets, these user adjustable widgets into inputs. So right click and it'll say convert to input. You do that. Boop. 
Boop. So we converted them all to inputs and we have our width and height from our resize node. And our batch size is actually the integer that comes out of the load images node. So now it's going to say this is a 512 by 512 uh, animation at uh, the length of the video. So all that stuff is sort of done for us by just loading a video. So we have to be wary of a few things when we're loading videos. If they're super long, that's how long your batch is going to be. So if you have a super long video and you only want to load the first 24 frames for 85 frames, you just change this, uh, this value right here. Uh, image load cap to uh, as many frames as you want to load. Skip first images tells it how many frames to skip at the beginning of the video before you start. So if I want to start halfway through the video, I just got to think about how many frames are in the video and just start halfway through. Select every nth I explained before. It uh, It's like a frame skip. So it's for making the video faster and be less frames. So one, this is a 60 frame video. Two, it's a 30 frame video because it's skipping every other frame. Uh, three, it's a 20 frame video, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 60 is fine for what we're doing. We're going to just use Dream Shaper. I have no prompt. Uh, let's try churros, baking in the sun, tropical background. So our motion control is at one. And I'm going to turn on my uh, preview method here so you can see what it's doing. <laughs> Oh, that's no fun. Okay. Uh, colors, your yellow. So yeah, loose control is incredibly powerful. That was four steps. You saw how fast that was, right? And as a result, it's actually really fast for upscaling too. Actually, we don't need this third one. That was just for explaining things. All right, cool. Uh, ba -do -ba -do, upscale, upscale. You're good. So image to you and image to you. Lighten up. Ba -do -do, ba -do -do, do -do -do. So this will upscale. All right. Let's try that again. So that should now just upscale. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah, if you're wondering what I did there, <clears throat> I just set up an upscaler that literally uses the same process and just upscales at one higher, but it runs everything through that control net again because it's all coming out of the control net. So there's a few ways you can handle that. You can either take the uh, clip out of the control net to get a second run on the control net, or you can actually bypass the control net entirely and just take the clip right out of the prompts. So uh, that's up to you. If you do the upscale with the clip right from the prompts, you're just going to get wild stuff with that sort of as the input latent. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, this, it's the beautiful part of Comfy. You can just try weird stuff every time you want to do weird stuff. If you can dream it, you can do it. So, yeah, now those are upscaled. I don't know if they're better, but they're upscaled. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I'm going to make these smaller because of this bug. I know they just fixed this bug or they go too small after you uh, or they disappear when you make the windows too big. You zoom out too far. But I don't like updating right before stream because it's when it breaks usually. Okay, so this loose control thing. The reason I wanted to talk about this this preview is I want to talk a bit about how control net works. Um, my understanding of control net when I first started was that this started in N percent actually had to do with the threshold of what the control net's doing. Like if it's depth, you know, it's where the white point was, is where the black point was, and like what that matter, what that meant, you know, depth wise. But no, it's based on time. It's based on steps. It's based on uh, what percent do you want me to start control netting and what percent do you want me to stop control netting. And once you understand that, a control net works a lot better. <laughs> you may want it to dream wildly at a certain point in your diffusion process and then lock down to the control net at different points or lock your control net when you're using multiple control nets you might want them to actually grab on at different times based on what their input information is. uh so uh let's see what this says at 0.5 so what this is going to do is control that for half the run well let's increase the steps because it's hard to do this with four do it with eight okay so 50 percent. it's gonna use control net for the first half of the dream 
then the rest of the steps it's actually just gonna do its thing this is easier to like visualize with still images but we'll see it in the result or not yeah the background's gotten a little weirder okay let's try to like 0.15 i'm going to disconnect the um upscaler for now a really easy way to make a switch is to grab one thing that the, the thing you're trying to use needs just make a reroute for it and just leave that reroute right by this thing so now when I want to use the thing, I just have to go like that. And when I want to disconnect it, I just have to go like that. Or, you know, use a switch node, whatever you want to do. That's cool. That's at 0.15. So that's that's just taking the motion. So we could even back it off a little more, I think. Try and find the magic number. Wait, what's still running? How are you running? You're not connected. You can see the tropicals starting to come in now. That was at 0.15, so it only ran for the first 15% of the run. Now it's only running for the first 10%. Let's see what that does. Ah, it looks more like a tree now. So yeah, this loose control is a very interesting way of of adding motion to your videos without like, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So then if we add it back to the whole time and then change the strength of the control net to that same value, let's see what that does. I think I forgot to make it a closed loop. Yeah. So in uh, the uniform context options, you can actually um, make animate diff try to make a perfect loop. Um, so yeah, if you want your stuff to loop, you can click that. And it, if your input footage loops, it'll probably loop. That's cool. So let's increase that strength just gently, or maybe to 50%, see what that does. These are nice, so I like these. I love how it's making churros. It's because it's in the prompt, so it is It is trying to make churros. So now here's 50% strength with control not happening the whole time. <clears throat> Pardon me. Awesome. We've lost the churros, but we got the tropicals. Let's try 0.35. I think that's going to be the magic number. And then we'll try some different input footage. Like maybe this. Might be cool. Might not. Who knows? Which one was that? Merchant Cube? All right. And how long is that? 90 frames? Let's do twice as fast. Yeah, that's cool. Like, let's just get rid of the churros. Sunswept, tropical beach, sunset, beautiful landscape. One thing you can do is if you want to see what your input footage looks like, uh, you can just grab this out of the resizer, put in a video combined node. And then there's a thing here for save output. If you turn that off, um, it's just going to show you stuff and not save it. So it's a great way to uh, preview stuff without saving a copy of it every time. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, input uh, footage. footage. Um, I'm just going to call it that. It's not saving, so it doesn't matter. But uh, in case I ever want to save it, I can. Um, but it's also just a way to see what exactly we're loading here. Ooh. All right, let's get the thing on 100% here and see what it does. That's nice, though. Yeah, Fakery, I know what you mean. It's kind of confusing. Control net is a conditional thing. And the IP adapters are on the model thing because IP adapter is a model. Okay, I'm actually going to let this one upscale because I bet that'll look cool as hell. You can also run your own control net for the upscaler. Like if you only want like 30% control net, you can just grab this, paste it here. Uh, instead of going in from the original control net, you can just, uh, actually you don't even need this. Um, you can grab this from the thing, positive, negative, positive, negative. Now you got your own little control net down here with your own settings. And you just plug this loader into this control net. And the images into this control net. And then you can say, you know, if I don't want control net on the thing, you can just turn it off. Or, you know, maybe you only want, you know, 25% control net on the final run. Because right now it's, yeah, it's totally gone nuts with the, oh, I think my things were connected backwards. Almost had a YouTube accident there. I think my positive and negatives were reversed here. That could have been bad. Doo-doo.
So when your positive and negative prompts are reversed, your NSFW nude, whatever's in your negative is going to become your prompt. This can make very scary, crazy stuff in your uh, workflows, <laughs> especially if your negative prompt is stuff like, you know, deformed, uh, multiple fingers, uh, extra teeth, you know, stuff like that you're trying to avoid. You can uh, accidentally prompt your way into that by reversing the streams there. There we go. Do, do, do. Wow. So let's try that at 50%. Oh, that's more what I was thinking. That's more what I was thinking. <clears throat> Sick. So, see what it looks like upscale a little higher. Nice. That looks really good. Wait, let's try a different one. <laughs> I'm curious what something like this looks like. It's longer, so let's do a short run on it. Let's try a triple speed. Uh, let me think about that for a second. 280. 280 divided by 4 is 70. So let's load 70 frames. At second speed, that should be one loop. We'll see if this loops here. I think it loops. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say loose control is just completely overpowered. Beautiful. Got the sunset and the beach, all the palette. Crazy. Let's see what the upscale does. Whoa. Should change this back to 1.5 actually too long for no reason that is impressive though i like that one what's the file size on that 1024 by 576 oh cool so that's um you double that up that's tonight uh 1080p mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or rather it scales to 1920 by 1080 comfortably i forget but that's a magic resolution for something yeah i forget so yeah, hopefully you can go forth and build your own um build your own lcm setup uh highly recommend lcm uh the iteration time is just insane like uh, you know these are this is 70 frame animations right like i, I mean this one is large this one's like 1024 by 1024 it's still fast but you saw how fast these were coming out and that's only eight steps they come out even faster at four so you can really test your stuff and, and get some masks going i think i will uh stream uh tomorrow um this same workflow but also going back and forth between blender and making a mask and then trying it out and seeing what it does so try and get an idea of what the different masks do with what the different uh you know uh, motion control settings are and uh maybe we'll make some comparison grids and stuff and uh give ourselves a sort of guide uh on how these can work oh, oh that's cool uh just the main lcm laura you just load it in right after your checkpoint either sdxl or sd15 and then just make sure your sampler is set to lcm and your cfg is down like one to three but yeah friends uh Go forth and have fun. Um, if you guys don't want to rebuild this workflow and it looks confusing and stuff, uh, I got very similar workflows on the Discord, and uh, I can clean this one up and post it too if you uh, if you want to play. So uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna do some blending as well as this. So we'll do the whole process, you know, making a mask and then bringing it in here. And let me save this workflow actually. YouTube 2024 0119 LCM Control Net loose control all right thank you everybody for hanging out um i'm gonna cut it here uh two and a half hours this was fun um yeah tomorrow let's do some blending let's do some uh let's do some comfy ui and let's uh let's rip it up 
uh, there's lots more to explore with loose control. Um, I barely scratched the surface here. Uh, so yeah, get the loose control control net and have fun with it. Uh, it's pretty wild. If you make your input videos too, like we'll try the swaying trees thing too. Cause I really, I really want to try the block out thing in blender, but, uh, I just don't have the mental capacity for it right now. Thanks everybody. Love you all. As always hit up the purse that XYZ for all the links. Uh, the Patreon's there. If you want to support what we do here, um, uh, get you into a special channel on discord and, uh, you know, special access to uh, help and all that stuff. Get on the Discord, hang out with us, post your work. I want to see it. Tag me when you make stuff with these tools that I'm teaching you how to use. And if you uh, if you enjoy it, hit me up, say hi. Uh, yeah, I love I uh, love interacting with the community. So let's do it. Come on, be in the Discord, and we'll nerd it up. And you know, if I can't help you, if I'm not around, there's people around that can help. There's a lot of smarty pants in there. We almost got a thousand people in there now. So um, we'll have to have a big streaming party uh, on the uh, when we get a thousand people in there. All right. Have a great night, everybody. And we'll see you real soon. I'm tomorrow. Uh, I think 3 p.m. tomorrow uh, Eastern, but uh, don't quote me. I will uh, get the thumbnail up as soon as possible with the schedule. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll tweet it out and post it on the Discord. And thanks, everybody. Uh, like and smash that smash like button and do all the things. All right. Love you guys. Bye.